Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dylan Smith, my co-host Blake Friars. A couple of years ago, we started the Chasing Two podcast. It's been a long time. We took three years off, but you know what? We're back. Going to do something a little bit different now. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy the video today. Blake, you got anything? Yeah, it's uh, it's excited to start launching some YouTube videos, getting back talking baseball. Um, we talk baseball all the time, uh, not recording. So it's it's good to uh, give the listeners some uh some insights on the conversations, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. First guy on our list is Cody Bellinger, comeback player of the year for the Cubs last year. He was a four-win player, 26 bombs, 307 batting average, 20 stolen bases, 97 RBIs, and we don't know where he's going. Blake, what do you got? Yeah, um, you know, I'm a big Blue Jays fan. It just makes too much sense for this guy. It's I, I think it's a perfect fit. Um, guy plays gold glove defense in center field. He can give Vlad a, a break at first base if need be. Um, he can play a little bit of left, um, kind of all three outfield positions. It's kind of uh it's kind of a mystery why this guy's unsigned. Obviously, at a a couple down years before he figured it out again in Chicago and kind of flattened out his swing a little bit. So um all the stuff that he's been doing in the offseason, it looks really promising. And um <laughs> The depth, the the roster doesn't look too great for the Jays right now. So adding uh adding a guy like Cody Bellinger would be uh would be a big boost to that lineup. Yeah. I you something you forgot to say is Scott Boris is his agent, right? <laughs> right? And Scott Boris is gonna shoot for the stars every year. And it seems like every year we have this situation where there's a top star, 28 years old, um, expected with a 24 a uh, million AAV this year. They're looking mm -hmm. at Fangraphs has that six years, 144. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, I think they're trying to get that 30 mil a year, but 24 is a good. It's a, it's a good number for Cody Bellinger. I think there's a lot of teams in it at 24, and I don't think it's gotten down to that price range yet. Like um, you, you said, think, the Jays. So uh, you, oh, go do ahead. you think he's gonna get that full six years? Like, do, or, or do you think that he wants like the seven, eight years? Do you think that's the holdup? Hmm. I mean, he is only 28 years old, but like you said, I mean, they weren't down years. They were terrible years. Yeah. Right? But he was injured. Um, that's what they're kind of saying was he was injured. But also, that was during, like, the launch ball era, right? I right. mean, it's – like you said, he has made some ch some changes in his bat path. Yeah. Um, so – but you said the Jays. Let's go ahead and take a look. So, um, right here, Blake, you know we've talked – I yep. think that for a two hundred forty million dollar payroll team, this lineup, yep, tough. It's tough. Yeah, we go oh, down it's... the pitching. Oh, it, it's it's good. I mean, Manoa's your five right now. Obviously, bad year last year, but he's only twenty six. Yeah, he can bounce back. That's you know, hundred percent that can happen. Yeah, bullpens, bullpens, nice. You got this Yariel Rodriguez guy. Mm -hmm. Um, brought back Chad Green. I mean, but as far as lineup goes. There, there is a lot of uh, money tied up in the payroll. Obviously, a lot is invested in that pitching, and their pitching's been really good the last few years. Uh, obviously, they're bringing in a guy like Justin Turner. He, he's going to play a lot of the DH, you would think. Uh, kind of replaces Brandon Beltro from last year. So he, he, right now, he's your four-hole hitter. But I mean, you, you put, you put uh, Bellinger between Bichette and Guerrero. All of a sudden, everybody slides down. Um, kind of lengthens that lineup. Adds a left-handed power. You know, they need a breakout from Dalton Varsho. This lineup needs a breakout from Dalton Varsho in the biggest way. He had 29 home runs the year before he came to the Jays. He had 23 last year. He stole, he stole uh, 20, 23 bags, but he played gold glove defense. So, like, he didn't let his play at the plate affect his play in the field, which is good, I guess. But, yeah, you need a lot of, of right-handed – or some – pardon me, left-handed pop from uh, the left side – Obviously, the Jays are banking on internal improvement from Vlad and Kirk and 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 Springer. Like that's to me, like that's that's the route they want to go. On, which I don't know if that's the safest route, but I don't know. Yeah, look, Varsha had twenty bombs last year, but they, they were spaced out. I mean, yeah. two twenty average. I was just going back real quick to look at that. I mean, they have him projected to hit a couple more bombs. Yeah, with a little higher of average, but. David Schneider came up, tore up the world for a little while, but they're only projecting a 232 batting average. Um, you know, obviously we have Kiermaier, who's 
definitely not going to play every day. Yeah. They're going to look for a platoon for him. Like that's, that's why so Bellinger he makes he a lot of point. sense, right? Like, I yeah. I mean, you guys got IKF, IKF right now. I mean, they have Kevin Biggio in there at third base, but it's going to be a combination of Biggio, IKF, Espinal, Schneider. I mean, the infield is just, it's tough. Yeah. It's, I mean, you add, you had Bellinger, obviously that gives you that everyday center fielder. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh also some insurance at first. I mean, could always DH Vlad some days. Um Turner can go play some first base as well. So I guess you're kind of set there. You know, you're really just trying to add in that outfield. Your outfielders right now are Springer, Kiermeyer, Varsho, and then Spencer Horowitz is your fourth. Yeah. Right? They just traded um, out of Lopez. He was out of options. He just got DFA. They traded him to the Giants today. Who do you like for Cody Bellinger? Um, I think he's going back to the Cubbies. Think so? I think he's going back to the Cubbies. Let's take a look. Yeah, I just think that. I mean, how do you not bring this guy back? I mean, it's just one of those things where they need they they just got Craig Council. They haven't done much outside of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they got it in Managa. Okay. I mean, what they, they that was their big move. Yeah. Talkman's their center fielder right now, who yeah. I like as a bench guy. I mean, I think that he's <laughs> yeah. a gamer, but Mike Talkman's your center fielder. I mean, it's, I think at Cubs Fest, Dansby Swanson said, when are we going to resign Cody Bellinger? So obviously his teammates want him back too. Right. Not really sure what the holdup is. I mean, maybe it's leverage from other teams. I don't know. Maybe it is the years. But yeah, I I like has... I like that fit too. I mean, you got a good good core there. Like Nico Horner's kind of figuring it out, right? He kind of broke out um last year a little bit. Um, Ian Happ's a a pro pro at bat. C.S. Suzuki's a solid player too. And obviously, you got that that Swanson down there. The bottom of the lineup. Could use a little work, I guess, but uh, I, I like Nick Madrigal in the nine hole. He's a, he's he's a really good contact guy, um, f- super fast. Um, yeah, they need Bellinger much like the Jays for sure. I mean, they just traded for Michael Bush from the Dodgers, who was a high end prospect for a long time, and just hasn't had the opportunity because yep. they're so stacked over there in LA. But they have him at first base right now, and their center fielder is Talkman, so you can literally put Bellinger at first or in center. Yeah, I mean, you choose. Who do you want to upgrade over? Right. Um, yeah, it just this makes too much sense. And they have the the pros the prospect capital that they wanted to build around Bellinger too to go trade. Um, you know, they have Pete Crow Armstrong. I don't think they'll get rid of him, but he's coming up. Maybe there that's their future center fielder. You know, um, maybe that's why they haven't pulled the trigger on this. But you know, the Cubs make sense. Yeah, it's crazy how many top free agents are available and we're 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 a week away from spring training. Like it's it's go time wrapping up. Um that's that's uh who who do we got for the second one? Oh, you're looking at their payroll. Yeah. That's all right. I mean one ninety six right now. Look at this. They don't have what do they have wrapped up? Swanson, okay. Hap. Cap's actually getting paid a lot more money than I thought he was. Yeah, you know? yeah, I didn't think that either. Um, Kyle Hendricks coming off the books this year at sixteen million. I mean, obviously he's not the old Kyle Hendricks at this point. Um, he's still going to get the innings, but it is what it is there. Um, yeah, I mean, one ninety six. Mm-hmm. Come down here, look at that luxury tax. You're estimating about two hundred eight right now. So they got money to spend. They're yeah. they're there. Yep. Um, and for those that don't know, it's two thirty-seven is the first, the first number. Um, yeah, so, the Jays so that we about... talked about are already over, so they yeah. would have to really splurge to go get Bellinger. Next guy we got is the reigning NL Cy Award winner, Blake Snell. Six WAR last year, fourteen nine to a two point two five ERA. It is his second Cy Young title. One with the Rays, one with the Padres, and he started thirty-two games last year. The thing with him is the innings pitched. He does not get too many innings pitched. He won it with 180 last year. Outside of that, the past couple of years, 128, 128, 50. That's the COVID year. 107, 
And then the last time he threw 180 innings in 2018, he had a 21 and five record with a 1.89. And that is the season where he won his first Cy Young. So you get him to 180 innings, he might win the Cy Young. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think... have him going to my halos. All right, all right. Let's look. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. Here's the pitching staff. <laughs> it is. It's young. It's young. That's for sure. Yeah. So Seth came up and did decent last year. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 2023 20, stats. If they will load for me, three point nine six. Some of that is out of the bullpen. Yeah. Um. Eight starts, and then you have. Sandoval, who, you know, last year, it is what it is. They didn't trade Shohei, and, you know, they need a splash. I mean, that's just the truth. I mean, they've added to the bullpen immensely. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, Stevenson brought back more after putting him on waivers. Luis Garcia, Adam Simber, Jose Cisnero. You know, you got some more depth down here. I mean, you still have Ben Joyce, Sam Bachman. Yeah. There's a lot of bullpen depth. There's not a lot of starting pitching depth. I'm think, thinking that oh, – go ahead. Do you think there's any of those guys in the bullpen that could stretch out to starters? I mean, Jose Suarez it was terrible last year to start the season. You see it, 8.29. Yeah. I mean, he can't get through four innings. I mean, four innings is kind of the max. You get to the fifth inning and gets a little rocky. I'm looking at Sam Bachman. Um, Sam Bachman was drafted as a starter, and he was in a relief spot last year. Um, you know, let's see if they even have, I don't think they'll have projected stats for him, but let's take a look if we find him. Let's see, Bachman, Bachman, here he is. They're thinking a five ERA. I mean, last year, let's, this was out of the pen, granted. 3.18 out of the pen. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, you they also, also did add Zach, too. please, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, projects, right? I mean, they're not. They're not built to win right now. I mean, it just is what it is. And they haven't done enough. No. And that's why I think that you should put the reigning Cy Young in the front of this rotation. Another well, thing, though, yeah. is if you get him, you have four lefties. It's really you're pushing out Silseth at that point. So, I mean, how many rotations do you know of that have four left-handed pitchers? <laughs> right? And the best two remaining pitchers, Jordan Montgomery, Blake Snell. How much does that really matter? You know, it's kind of up to what the front office thinks. But, I mean, he's – the one thing that I am wary about is the innings pitch. Um, obviously, I read that he's only hit 180 innings twice in his career. But, ironically, those are the two years he won the Cy Young. So, yeah. Um, but it is a guy that has won. You know, he's he's gone to the World Series. I just think that for the long term, because they are so young, to put him – into that rotation and maybe eventually be a number two for you when you are ready. It's more of a long-term play than it is a now play. Well, right now, like I think Detmers has a stuff, but he, like he's too young to be an ace right now. Like they need Blake Snell to show, show him the ropes a little bit. I do like that fit as well. I got him going to the Yankees. Um, they've uh, they're back to their big bad boy spending ways, bringing in Soto. Um, I think it'd be a good two headed monster to pair up with uh Garrett Cole. Um they obviously signed uh, Carlos Rodon to that big 6-year contract last year. It was a disastrous first year for him. Um you, you obviously you bring in Stroman, right? Uh, that's a good number 2/3. Um and then you obviously got Nestor Cortez who's coming off uh coming off an injury. So, um I think slotting in you slot in cell with Cole, Rodon, Stroman, Clark Schmidt, Cortez. Like that's that's arguably one of the best rotations in baseball. Like I think they obviously they're rumored or it was uh out there that they they offered him a six year, right? But they he wanted eight, two hundred and sixty, right? I think that it was six years, twenty five million A V. Yeah. Um, so it was hundred and fifty million, is that right? Hundred and twenty five yeah. million. They wanted like 200 so, plus. So, I mean, they, they've offered, I think they're the only team to offer him a contract. So obviously there's interest there. Um, reported, 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 reported. So yeah, like you look at like on paper, that's one of the best rotations of baseball. Uh, Garrett Cole's. Well, you're at, you'd have the AL and then I'll say young 
in the same rotation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not good for your Jays. So <laughs> there's a lot to like about this Yankees team. Like I really like what they've done with their team so far. Like they bring in Grisham, they bring in uh um Verdugo Soto. Like they we've been we've been talking a long time. Where's all the left-handed bats with that short porch and right? And they're they finally they finally brought them all in, right? So um yep. it's a it's a powerful lineup. Something you forgot to mention, this rotation last year had a guy that was super underrated, Michael King. Yeah, and he's gone. They had to give him up for Soto. So yeah. it's a give and take, right? I mean, if obviously if you get Snell, it's a little bit easier bullet to swallow. But Soto's on a walk here. And he's not going to be a Yankee forever unless they pony up. So, And that payroll, I mean, let's look at it. Again, this is another issue with them. Angels, they still – they're at – they're under about 50 million right now. So, um, but look at this. <laughs> they are over, over. And if you're adding another five years, I mean, you'll get Rizzo off eventually. I mean, this option is not getting picked up. The no, no. 17 million for Rizzo. So there's 17 million to spend. Mm, DJ LeMayhew still, that's going to be tough for a little while. You know, so. And then this guy, Giancarlo Stanton, kind of the guy that's holding some things up, I think, for them. Obviously not now. I mean, 295, they're going. So, you know, I'm not – I don't yeah, you, I don't know. Maybe you just keep going. You just keep going. And Well, I mean, look at the Mets the a couple of years mark. ago. They went up to, what, 425? <laughs> and they all had to blow it up a year later. Yeah. Um... So it, it's been showing that, I mean, just because you spend the money doesn't, that doesn't mean it translates to success. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. but I, but I do think it'd be a really good fit. Um, him and the Cub or him and the Yankees. And number three, we got Jordan Montgomery last year, world series winner, of course, 4.1 war, 10, 11 record, but don't be fooled by that. The 3.20 ERA made 32 starts. And this guy is durable every year. Um, whether it was for the Yankees, Cardinals, uh, Texas Rangers last year, he just goes out there every fifth day and gets it done. And uh, Blake's got him going to the Red Sox, I guess. Yep. Uh, they brought in Giolito. Obviously, they just traded Chris Sale to the Atlanta Braves. Um, they need a guy that can come in there much like uh, you – said Snell to the angels to just kind of lock down that number one ace role. Um, is he an ace? Uh, you can make the argument for it. I, I think he's more of a two guy, but um, Boston needs Boston hasn't really done anything like they <laughs> haven't done. <Yeah. laughs> so Sometimes technology fails us. Um, yeah. Yeah, like you look at that pitching rotations, like Nick Pavetta spent half of the year in the, in the road in the rotation. And then, he was in the bullpen. Uh, Brian Bayo is young. Cutter Crawford's young. Tanner Houck is but it was up and down last year. So obviously Lucas Giolito's got the track record and, and whatnot. They bring him in, in on a contract this year, but I I think it makes too much sense for him to go to the Red Sox. But for whatever reason, they haven't been spending money this offseason, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it's been noted too that his wife's doing residency out there in Boston. At least that's what I've heard from other. Yeah. Uh, podcast and shows that I've watched in the past. So um, it does make sense. I just kind of feel like, why isn't it done, not done yet? Right. They right. have, they have talked about trading um, Yoshida. That's been rumored. Um, Duran, Trevor story. I mean, they're, they've all been on the block at some point this off season, but I mean, I mean, as I, I was just on there, they have, they're about 40 million under the luxury tax and they're the Boston freaking red Sox, yeah you know it's, like it's crazy they, they're the red Sox. It's, they're not they're not the oakland a's so yeah um, but yeah. They're, they want to be this year apparently i mean i i get it. it's frustrating um you know baseball is just for whatever reason it's some years ownership will go for it when they're not supposed to some years they will do nothing and somehow those teams make it into the playoffs i mean it's just that's how the ball rolls sometimes. I'm not saying that's going to happen with this team, but it seems like the yeah, Red like, Sox are always somehow in it, some like in the wild card race, no matter what. Right. So um, yeah, this like looks the, pretty tough. 
I but. like the Grisham pickup. Uh, I like the addition of Tyler O'Neill. Uh, but like Tristan no, Costas. What? Oh, Grisham. Yeah. Yeah, Grisham. Sorry, yeah. they said. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean... But other than that, it's like a lineup looks pretty bleak. Um. Yeah. Ryan, I'm excited to see this year, but yeah, I mean the pitching side. Talking yeah, about I... Jordan Montgomery. I mean the bullpen ain't bad, but the, the bullpen's not bad. Know. No, no. Those innings, those innings, you know, you'd basically repl- be replacing Corey Kluber with Jordan Montgomery, who right. has been, you know, really good over the past couple of years. Um, I have him going to the Giants. Um, let's go take a look over there real quick. Today they actually signed Jorge Soler. That's going to be another video that we're going to do a little bit later. Um, that one will be pretty small, pretty brief. But yeah. as we get there, um, they did add Robbie Ray. Um, I do remember that. So see if yep. it'll load. Oh, it's not loading on you. <laughs> no. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, they got Robbie Ray. They just traded uh, Ross Stripling, right? Ross Stripling, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a young rotation as well. Um, Robbie Ray, obviously not listed. Oh, he's hurt. He's going to start that he's year hurt. on the IL. Right? Yeah. So some point coming back, you'll have Webb, Ray. And I um, forgot Jordan they brought Hicks, in Jordan Hicks to start. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Tristan Beck, uh, Corona High School, actually in my area. I'm from Southern California. Um, it's cool to see his name on there. I uh, mm. faced him in high school, so... Um, yeah, I mean they could definitely use an arm. I don't know Jordan Montgomery how much. Let's see, what do we got here? What what are they thinking over here? Fangraphs has them. If it this will load, Jordan Montgomery twenty one million a year. See, like I feel like he would be signed already if it was twenty one. You know? Don't you, you think, think? that twenty one's fair? You think that? <sighs> What what did Stroman get? Eighteen. Yeah, Stroman I mean, got. 18. He has a better track record. So maybe like twenty three mil, maybe. You think twenty three million a year? I I don't think Jordan he's Montgomery. Getting, I don't think I he's personally getting, wouldn't do that. I'm personally not giving Jordan Montgomery twenty three million a year. Not, what's your ballpark then? What do you think he's going to get? I think seventeen to max twenty. That's where I would go. Four year eighty. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, so like Texas, 105 million, Texas I, is obviously can't sell me on giving 105 million to Jordan Montgomery. I, like I said, workhorse goes up there every fifth day. Yeah. Probably better than what people realize. But I mean, he's not like a, he's a, he's a, he's, he's one ace. of those guys will spot. Yeah. He'll spot it up. He'll keep you in the game. Um, but yeah, I just think, well, and he's 31, 21 million. 21 million Twenty-one million a year, Jordan Montgomery. It's, I'm not doing it. I'm not buying it. But one thing to note, Blake Snell that we talked about before has the qualifying offer. You sign Jordan Montgomery, you're not giving up any prospect or any uh, draft capital. Sorry. Yeah. So no qualifying offer attached. I mean, that might be the reason why he's at twenty-one. Um, but yeah, ready to move on. So well. I mean, Texas is a fit too, but they obviously got the TV deal issues there. Um, that's well, why this they... got a result today, actually. Oh, did it? Okay, so that's yeah. that's interesting. So maybe maybe they circle back on Montgomery because it was such a good fit uh, with the they Rangers. Have so many, they have so many pitchers. I mean, some of them are hurt. Obviously, Degrom's gonna I'm gonna be ready right away. Um, and then Scherzer, I think, might not be ready opening day also. But I mean, they already got a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, I, for, you, oh, you have I forgot the gray yeah. Heaney. Obviously, right now Dunning and Bradford we replaced that with Scherzer and Degrom at some point. Yeah, maybe it doesn't fit after all. I forgot that Scherzer and Degrom are coming back. Oh, Tyler, and they hired Malley, Tyler too, Bailey they too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it said, yeah, he should be back from TJ mid year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and then don't forget they. I mean, he hasn't been good in the in the minor leagues, but they do have Jack Leiter. Yeah, that guy's got to yeah. get it going sometime, right? Yep. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, payroll wise, uh, they got to be up there a little bit, right? Well, yeah. What do you think with Degrom and Scherzer? They are at. 
Oh, they are at now. Two twenty already. So, so you sign you sign Jordan Montgomery to a twenty one million dollar contract. You're going over the luxury tax, and they just won the World Series. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't go for it, but after a year where they just went to the World Series, I just I'm not seeing it. And um, there's not really who are you going to trade? Andrew Heaney's at thirteen million. I guess if you could find a taker for his contract and switch it out with Montgomery, but it would be a one year deal. Maybe somebody the Twins or something. Yeah, I don't know. I just it's it's kind of weird. Uh, I I think that as much of a fit of they want it to work, I just don't see it working financially for the Rangers. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Next we have Matt Chapman, four win player, seventeen bombs, two forty batting average. Most of those homers did come early in the season, and he kind of fell off a cliff. But nonetheless, he's going to get it done with the glove, and he's you know. Probably the best third baseman in the game or the most consistent outside of Nolan Arenado. Um, who do you have? Uh, this might be a little bit off the board, but I got him going to the Tigers. I mean, that's a, it's a young mm. group. Um, I feel like that would be a good fit uh, to secure down a platinum glove third base uh, at the hot corner. Um, you got a lot of up and coming young players um on that Detroit roster. I think adding a vet like uh like Chapman um would, would be a good would be a good fit for them. I mean that, that's just yeah. what I think. It might be a little bit off the board, but I don't know. Money is would definitely not be an issue for them. I mean, look at this number. I mean, I wish. <laughs> I mean, but you know, it goes with the territory. They've been bad for multiple years. And I mean they they do need him. I mean, let's go to the depth chart real quick. I mean, he he's one of those guys. It's just like he could hit thirty bombs. It's he just, could it, pop it's, off. Like yeah, no, for sure. That last year was a down year. Last yeah. year was a down year. I mean, well, down year in a when he won a Gold Glove. So it's kind of like uh, I don't know. It's he uh, has hit he has hit thirty homers in a year before, right? I think he had thirty three yeah, one year. 36, but 36. it's been a couple of years removed. Yeah. Um, 2019. Um, but in 22 and 21, he hit 27 homers in both years. Last year, only 17. Obviously, that's a big drop off there. But yeah. All right. Let's look at this lineup here. I got, I got, third it's, base, it's Zach young. McKinstry. Like this lineup. Like, you might be on, to, you might be on to something here. You like might be on to something. I think, like, you got. You got Cole Keith, you got Torkelson, you got Riley Green, Meadows. Like he, these are a bunch of young guys. You had Chapman in that lineup. All like that's a stabilizes your left side of the infield, right? So I don't know. I, I like Javi Baez. Talk talk all you want about his uh, about his bat at the plate, but he, you got Chapman and Javi Baez on the on the left side. Like that's among one of the best in the league, right? So I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like Baez over at second a little bit more than short, but yeah, you know, it, it's yeah, it's kind of it seems like nobody really wants to go to Detroit these days. So yeah. it's not a knock at Detroit fans. It's just yeah, it, it's it's tough. It's a tough sell. It gets it's cold dur- during April, and yeah, the roster isn't the greatest, but they are in the Central, and anybody can win that AL Central. <laughs> it's the same as the NL Central. It's open. I mean, yep. the Twins are probably the best the best team there and they haven't really done much this off season on the white Sox, We'll see if they could bounce back. They still do have some pieces, but they're kind of rebuilding again. Kansas city's gone hard this off season. Um, and they got but, uh, Bobby Witt locked up. That's good. Yeah. Um, I actually have the Mariners. Mariners. And okay. It's, I think it's the right fit, but I think it's a fit that should have happened months ago. Right. Um, Obviously, they trade for Jorge Polanco, but is Jorge Polanco your end-all, be-all at third base? I mean, when you can have a Chapman. Right. If this thing will load, my computer is not wanting to help me right now. Mm. There we go. There we go. (laughs) And what do we got? Josh Rojas is actually who they got. They think they're going to play Polanco at second base last year. Um, Duran, right? Uh, Duran, who is who is it that took over in Minnesota? Young guy, 
I'm, uh, I'm blanking. Oh, right it now. was uh, it was uh, the Canadian there. Um, uh, I am blanking on his name. It's gonna. Oh no, you know, we got we it. look it up. <laughs> it's just driving me nuts. I can't remember. It was. They traded Arias, obviously, to the Marlins. Yeah. Oh, he's he's Canadian. Oh, my God. It's, I can't remember his name. Edward uh, Edward Julian. Yeah, That's Edward Julian. Name. Edward Julian. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, he rakes, so they too. Got rid he's of lefty. He's lefty. Yeah, they got rid of Polanco. Um, and he's on the Mariners now, if you guys didn't know that. It happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, this team is... Gonna have to try to compete with the Astros and the Rangers. Um, they got Mitch Garver. Weird. They have Cal Raleigh. I guess Mitch Garver's just gonna DH all year. Yeah. Um, are they gonna split or something? Kind of a weird fit. Yeah. Um, Luke Rayleigh crushes righties. Can't hit lefties. Probably gonna need a platoon there. So look out for them to get an outfit there at some Mitch point. Mitch Hanniger too. Traded for Mitch Hanniger in that Robbie Ray deal. They have Josh Rojas at third. That's just not going to get it done. You had Matt Chapman put him maybe in this seven hole. Yep. Um, lineup gets a lot. I mean, this this lineup is deep. It is deep. I mean, Mitch Hanniger is your eight hole. Can't stay healthy most of the time, but mm-hmm. he's still a really good player when he plays. Right. Yep. So, um, I think this is the perfect fit. Uh, I don't know what their payroll is really like right now. I got to kind of take a look at that. Um, uh, that's ridiculous. They got a lot so well. of money. <laughs> yeah. Wow. A lot Where of money. They on the show, hey, sweepstakes. Damn. Yep. Julio, look at this contract. It's gonna be good. It's gonna like, be good. I man. honestly, man, it would not surprise me if he circled back with the Jays too. Like that would not surprise me at all. Like if if he bets on himself on a one year deal and goes oh, back to the oh, Jays. Chapman. Chapman. Yeah, Chapman. One year deal, maybe like I have no idea. Like why this guy isn't signed is kind of crazy because like that just tells me there's just not many teams that need a third base. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there there really isn't. I mean, the Giants they keep saying that's a fit too. Um, but I mean, I mean, let you want to go look at the Giants real quick? Might as well. Yeah, yeah we could. We were already there a little while ago. Let's see. Third base, they got Wilmer Flores. That's not going to happen. They yeah. only have Wilmer Flores out there at third base because Jorge Soler signed today. That, right. That's going to be the DH. I mean, right. that that guy's not ready to play all those games. Let me refresh this, get these stupid ads out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, Otto Lopez, your guy. Just trade over JD Davis. That's that's who they think is really going to play third base, and he's not the greatest defensively. He no. can't swing a little bit. Um, Lamonte Wade Jr. I mean, do you really think he's playing first base every day? I'm not sure about that either. So I could see Wil- Wilmer going over to first, and Matt Chapman at third base. Yep. Lamonte Wade finding the abs in between all that. Um, this team is going to be a little bit better than I think people think. Um, yeah. You know, Jung Hoo Lee. Underrated signing. Um, we'll see how that goes, but based off of what we know, I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, he rakes. Um, they only got him at two eighty nine. That's his projections. Two eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah, two eighty nine. Ten bombs. It's a big ballpark for a lefty. Last but not least, we got J D Martinez. Last year, J D Martinez had a one point nine WAR, thirty three bombs, got back on track there with two seventy one batting average. Also had 103 ribbies. Can't not gonna hate that. Um, but he is just a DH, and the DH market is very, very thin right now. Um and Blake, who do you got? I got him going to the Marlins. Um, this guy's been linked everywhere, it seems, but I, I just feel like I, I, I could see him going to Miami. Their payroll isn't that large. Um they need another bat in that in that lineup. Um that lineup. It's uh, it's it's missing Jorge mm. Soler, so he basically just replaces Jorge Soler. So, um, yeah, I I think that could be a good fit there. Yeah, 
I mean, Josh Bell also, maybe they look for him to get some DH. Mm-hmm. It says Osvaldo Garcia right here too. Um, yeah, they're actually pretty right-handed. I mean, you got Arias and Jesus Sanchez is in there right now, but Man. he hasn't he hasn't been a starter for them, right? I mean, it's just kind of been to bounce around that right. deal there, right? So, I mean, Josh Chisholm coming off injury last year. Um, these are two lefties. I I kind of would like to see them add a left-handed bat, but I know there's not much left out there. Yeah. Let's see. Lefties. Brown and I mean, Belt. obviously Bellinger's out there, but I mean, I do not see that happening. No. Um, yeah, your other option would be Belt. Um, Eddie Rosario, maybe. Um, obviously, yeah, that's a big drop off. Like, there's, there's nothing. There's so, nothing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's pretty it's, slim. I, I like it. I like it. I mean, they were their pitching still solid. Their pitching still solid right here. I like. Um, uh, I like the really addition of. Uh, I like the addition of Jake Ber- Berger. I think that's gonna be a really good. Like, I think he could hit thirty bombs this year. Yeah, I mean, they have projected twenty nine, and last yeah. year when he went over to the Marlins, he. With the, 34. He hit 34. He hit 34. So, yeah. He, uh, that's, that's a really good pick last year when he went over there. Yeah. So, I mean, J.D. Martinez put him into the little four spot here. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Um, I have him going to the Twins. Hmm. Uh, as we talked about before, they haven't done much. Yeah. And I feel like they're just a piece. They probably need the arm more than they do another bat, but – you know, because we're looking at this pitching, Lopez, Ryan, okay. They traded for Disclafani from Seattle. But Ober and Paddock, uh, yeah. you know, I expect them that maybe like Ole Renzen or something like that. Uh, definitely could have been on this video. I think that, um, you know, as arms go, yeah. you know, there's some other guys um, that we could have talked about. But you got Julian Lewis. Hopefully he's healthy. I can't wait to watch him play this yeah, year. He's such Buxton, a stud. Another guy. Hope that he's. What's crazy? Look, ten stolen bases is a projection for Bucks. That's so sad. Yeah. I know. Um, Kepler, Correa. They just got Carlos Santana. Yeah. Carlos Santana somehow just has a nice year every year. Yeah. Last year he had twenty three bombs, and he got signed somehow at six bags. Somehow at six bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think he got signed for like five million dollars. I got eight mil. Eight, I think it's eight mil. I I think it was less. Let's check. Five point two million dollars. <laughs> he is not. He obviously he's Carlos Santana. Like he's older dude. But like, dude, like, what was I gotta look this up? Carlos Santana. Sorry, I know we're talking about JD Martinez, but. <laughs> we always get shocked last year last year Carlos Santana was almost a three war player on baseball reference yeah that's and crazy. he got five million dollars yeah I mean obviously there's other things that go into that but but like obviously still- with this team a lot of it relies on health right you talked about Lewis Buxton Kepler's in, often injured Correa's had his injuries in the past um so like if it goes right and and they add a guy like JD Martinez, like this lineup can bang. Like this lineup is good if they stay healthy. Yeah, I could see Kirilov playing some outfield. Like, do you me. think Buxton's an everyday like in order for them to in order for them to get JD Martinez, you gotta have full confidence that Buxton can play every day in the outfield. Because last year he yeah, did most that's, of the day. I feel like that's what's holding him back from somebody like JD Martinez. Is, right. They gotta have that. Can security. Buxton play the like, outfield? He right. said he is though. He came out, he came out and said Hey, I'm ready to play center field again. I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling good. So, yeah. how long that lasts, I don't know. Hopefully, it does because he's a stud when he's on the field. Yeah. But I think a JD Martinez is a callback to when they had Nelson Cruz. Yeah. You put Nelson Cruz, you know, or sorry, JD Martinez in this in this lineup, like Nelson Cruz, how they had that for multiple years, Boy, and, and plus and he's been to the World Series. Yeah. He's coming off being on the Dodgers. I mean. It's it's the right fit for Julian Lewis, yeah. Kirilov, those younger guys. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, I think they can need to add another arm, but the central is so weak. This would be my pick for them. So, or pick for the central. So, 
that's going to wrap it up. Um, thank you guys. First video back. It's been a long time and me and Blake are very, very excited for where this channel is going. So um, see you on the next one.